No, no, no. I wanted to tell you that I saw that he he's a he's a very good uh, he's very kind. That uh, that even after all the bad things that happened to him, he stayed very kind and he wanted to save uh, all humanity. That, all right. That's what Jesus in the cross, my friend. He says, "Forgive them, Father. They do not know what they are doing." He was not cursing and angry and I want to kill you and I want to show you what I can do. Just for me, wait for me, I'm coming back. Even when he was on the cross, he was yes. forgiving and merciful. Imagine if Jesus say, kill them for revenge for me. Do you know what the Christians would do to the Jews? We are almost 3 billion a human beings. If Jesus says, kill whoever deny me, do you know what we can do? But Jesus, he cared for you, Muhammad. He cared for your family. Christians today is the most powerful nation when it's come to armies. Nobody can stop them. They can destroy everything. And I believe those countries, they would, they would destroy everything anyway. But here we have Jesus, the merciful, the loving. He don't want the Christians and the Muslims to hate each other. We don't ask to kill each other. He ordered the Christians to love their enemies. So my friend Muhammad, I've been ordered by the Messiah to love you and your family as my own family even though you've been taught as a muslim not to be a friend to the christians and this is the no, huge no, difference I never, I, never accepted, I never believed that I you don't believe because that. you're a good person but the quran order you correct yeah in in a way uh, yes I, I yeah think there is no other way the quran chapter 5 verse 51 take not christians and jews as a friends specifically so you've been ordered to, to be evil but because you are a good person you are coming from a good family you do not believe in such a garbage but for me from the other side i've been ordered to love the muslims even if they are not being just to me even if they are unfair even if they are killing us and the love we present to you is to provide you the truth about jesus so you can be saved so when we invite you to be saved by jesus not because we hate you but because the Messiah loved you before us. Yes, yes, I know it's a very kind message, and I and I uh, and, and like you said, uh, we were brought up in uh, in liking kindness and trying to be kind. So anything kind, it 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 touches it touches me, and I understand that. So, what do you think about accepting the Messiah as your Lord? Uh, uh, I, 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 I really I really I really want to uh, but I don't think that it would be uh, you you know uh, you know when I saw when I uh, all my life when I see people entering Islam without learning about Islam I never liked it you know that when uh, when they accept it uh, directly I always wanted them to at least uh, learn about it you, you well, know Muhammad so that, no Muhammad he don't care for this Muhammad he prefer if you do not know the Quran says that clearly. Don't say we believe, say we come, we become a Muslims. And you know that, right? So this is the nature of Islam. Islam do not want you to know because in chapter 5, verse 101, ask not questions. Why? Because if you ask questions, you will leave the faith. You know, the only problem uh, that I may have with Christianity, and it's the same, I know it's the same with Islam. I know that it's the same. It's, I, I believe that, uh, you, you know, I, I think I understood, I understood the kindness of Jesus. I really, I really believe that I understood it. But I, I, I don't, I, when someone is kind, I don't think that... Uh, that he will send all all the non-believers in hell. You know what I mean? No, my uh, friend. Because he is kind, he will send you. He will send them to hell. Let me uh, let me explain to you why. This person, he is so kind to the point he come to this earth. He cry out to save you. He die in the cross. He been tortured. He been called names. Just to tell you, I'm coming to save you. And then, Muhammad, he refused to accept him as a savior. So it is not him who decide to go to hell for you. It is you who chose to go to hell. Because it's you who refuse to be saved. So don't blame the Messiah for not being kind. It is you who is not being kind to himself. 
So when the day of hell will come, and you say, this is not nice. Well, he said, was it nice uh, when no, I came I to you? I, I, uh, I assure you, I don't care about, about me. Uh, I, I always believe that, uh, that I may go to hell, and it's not a problem for me. It's the kind people that... Uh, the, the, that the I find it sad that kind people may go to hell. You know, I I, I assure you that I'm not thinking friend, about my friend. The, the kind, the kind people it doesn't matter how kind you are because the the kind is is evil. The kind of a man is evil because even when we are kind, we commit sin. None of us is a clean like a clear water, even clear water full of bacteria. So when a human being he played the victim or he played that he is so kind, but in reality we are not. We commit sin, and we do sin, and we live with sin. And later, we claim that we are the good ones who is walking like angels in this earth. But in reality, we are not. So God is not judging kind people. We are not. We are always committing sin, non-stop. And the best of us is not even clean. So when God will judge you, he will judge you for rejecting him. He will judge you for what you did. He will not judge you for being kind which means he will not punish you because you were good. He will punish you for you being bad. So don't worry about the just of God. God is just. As an example, if somebody never heard of Jesus, let us say he lived in the, jung the jungle of Amazon. He never heard of the yeah. Bible. He never heard of Jesus. Is that fair he will go to hell? Well, no, God, he will it's, not... the same thing in, in, well, in, it's the same thing in Islam. That's no, when he doesn't hear no, about it. No, no, no. No, you see, you do not know much about your religion. Uh, so in, in, only in Christianity. If you never heard of, uh, uh, you know, when you say something to me, Muhammad, let, uh, show me reference. Otherwise, this is not true. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I know. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not in yeah. uh, expert so, at in, all. It, so it's what if we you were do not, if you about. do not get, you see, we just prove that Allah is unjust. Me and you, we agree that Allah is unjust, and you, this is why you left Islam, right? So. Suddenly, Allah is just again. He can't be. He can't be just and unjust at the same time. Either you are just or unjust. And as long as you believe in destiny, that's mean if somebody don't heard, he never heard of Islam. Allah did not make him hear of Islam. You know, Islam is a silly. Okay. Islam is a silly religion based on this because Allah did not make me hear about Islam. How stupid is that? You know. So, uh, God will judge you based on your knowledge. And now you as an as a Muhammad who spoke to me and you know about Christ, you know about the Bible. So if you refuse the Bible, then you are really challenging God or you rejected God. You are not the same as a person who live in the jungle in the middle of nowhere. You never heard of the Messiah. And you live as a human being, whatever God he gave you little knowledge in your heart. And you are not. So I asked you already twice to say, I said to you, accept the Messiah, look like you are not ready, and this is your choice. But I say to you, time will come and your soul will be taken from you. Your soul, your body, it is not yours. Everything you have will be taken from you. And then after your soul will be taken from you, you cannot repent and there's no return. So my friend Muhammad, I give up. But I don't give up. I give up on you as a human. But I pray to the Lord to open your heart and to make you accept Him as Lord and Savior. I pray for that. But as long I just want what what can I read to know more about Christianity, please? Go, go. You know, you can read. Start from the Book of John, Book of John, the Gospel of John, and read about uh, about the Messiah from the Book of John. But try to read and to live the words. Try to read and to live the story, not just to read. Try to be filled with the love of the book so you can understand the book. Okay, and then I read the three others. Go when you finish the first one, you can read there. But the first one alone will make you a different person. I guarantee you that. Okay, Th thank you very much for your, for your time. You're welcome, you Muhammad. I'm so happy that you decided to leave Islam at least, and you are a step closer to accept the Messiah, and I hope soon I will hear from you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. God bless. You too, thank you. Well, <clears throat> we know we did our best what we can do, right? What we can do. 
uh, but at least we were able to save him from from Muhammad. That alone is wonderful. <laughs> All right, I you know uh, every day actually we go live. We have a very good like let us say productive day. Either somebody leave Islam, either somebody accept the Messiah, either some, I mean, always, always, there's no way our work will go with no benefit. And that make many Muhammadan get upset and angry. But the question is, <laughs> you get angry because you cannot refute us. As simple as that. I have an offer for the Mohammedan. We have 1,400 people watching. Who is going to call right now and bring this gentleman back to Islam? Do you see, do you see how big the challenge? My voice is tired, you can tell. My throat is hurting. But I'm willing to stay. And I'm giving you as a Muslim to call me and to reverse all the proofs I gave to Muhammad which made him leave Islam. Who is the Muslim would like to call us? Can he think or he dare to take that challenge and we are live on air? Your brother Muhammad, he just left Islam and you don't want to do anything? Where is your heroes? Where is your Dudu and Susu and Mumu? Where is your Sheikh? Where is your Ustaz? Any Muhammadan? And now actually I remember this guy, the gentleman from Malaysia, remember him? I actually, last time I hang up on him. And now I remember him. This 70 years old man, he called me before from Malaysia. Today he called us, he left Islam. And not only that, his family left Islam too. And not only that, a bunch of his friends, they left Islam too. Where is the Ustaz of Malaysia? Where is the Ustaz of Indonesia? They are good to take $5,000 to make a speech from the poor Indonesian. I saw a documentary about how Indonesian poor people make money. I saw them digging in the volcano to get some sulfur rocks. And many of them, they die before the age of 50 because of the poison gas they breathe. To make living, they have to climb a mountain, carrying sulfur, walking over hot rocks, you know, breathing poison, literally poison, to make living. And then a guy, he make himself, he call himself Ustad. He don't even know how to say his prophet name correctly. He asked for $5,000 to make a speech. This is the biggest scam ever in history. Islam is a scam. Prove me wrong. $5,000 to make a speech? What that will do to the nation? Is that going to fear to feed the poor? If those people are serving God, why they need such a money? I'm not saying don't take money. You can take money. Everybody need money. But five thousand dollars for a speech. Those people, their time is not for free. And what are they doing to you? 
Here we go. We need them now. Can they come and defend Muhammad? Can they come and tell us who is what Islam is? I want those who is going to download this video, cut this last part, and make a challenge for those Ustad, and tell them, Christian Prince, he says, shame on you. You are a bunch of scammers. You have no dignity. And you have no courage. And your Lord does not exist. This is why you fear to talk to me. All what you do is a business. It's a pure business. You have nothing to do with God. And you do not know God. And you are not godly. Those people who live in a poor country like Indonesia, they should give their time for free. People in these countries, they send their daughters to work as maids in Saudi Arabia. Nobody would like to send his daughter as a maid, unless he have to, he have no choice. Nobody like to work as a maid. So how in the world those people, they make a lot of money and you are dying from anger? How come they have money to build mosques, huge ones, so beautiful, by marble, but inside of them the death is, each of hate. But they have no money for schools and for the poor. The president of Indonesia, the hypocrite, he met with Joe Biden with the other hypocrite. And they were talking about a human right. While we have a Christians in jail, just because they debated Muslims, they arrested them. This is how you can win an argument and win a debate by arresting the guy who debate with you. You are a bunch of cowards. I want to say thank you guys for being here. I hope today we have a good time. And actually, it's always a good time to see Muslims leaving Islam and to see people accepting Christ as we witness today and every day. I wanted really to hear from uh, our friend Muhammad that he decided to accept the Messiah, but what you can do? I mean, I did my best. Still, his heart is not. Uh, let us say ready and well, people they always make choice and their choice is their own I want to say thank you all for being here uh, we will see if we will go live tomorrow I saw one in the comment saying why Christian Prince is forcing people to subscribe the question is for the dummy who is asking the question who is forcing you to come here anyway? I mean, people are really very silly. They come to your door. They knock at your door. They open your door. They jump inside your house. And then they ask you, how come we are in your house? So if you don't like to be here, why you are here? Don't get married. Your wife, she will lose her mind because she has an intelligent, special, handsome husband who is coming from the refrigerator. And they call him these days sojages. If you are a sojages, don't give me your sojages here. What a bunch of zucchini. what's wrong with people you don't know i mean you know you come to the person and you tell him why you are you know why you are here did some did somebody push you today actually somebody told me a joke i will share it with you about this silly one there's a muhammad and he was you know going in the desert he was so thirsty he saw a jew 
Finally, he saw a Jew. He said, do you have water? He said, the Jew, I don't have water. He said, I need water. He said, I have mask if you want. He said, I do not need mask. I need water. He said, I have mask for five dollars, the Jewish guy, he said. The Muslim guy, he says, what's wrong with you? You are evil. You are evil. I want water. You, are, you want to send me mask? The Jewish guy, he said, you know what? You are insulting me for me. He said, this is what I have. What I can do. However, listen. What if I'm miles from here, if you keep going, maybe 10 or 20 miles, whatever, you go, you will find a restaurant, go drink and eat. So, the Muhammadan, he went. After like many hours, he came back and hardly he can breathe. The Jewish guy, he said to him, while you are back, he said to him, I cannot enter the restaurant without a mask. <laughs> My microphone has a static, okay. Okay, give me a second. Yeah, I look like if I speak for a certain... Certain... Okay, is it better now? Is it better now? All right. So yeah, you know, people don't want to listen, you know, the guy, he says to you, I have mask. And obviously the mask is there for a reason. He's not being evil. This is what he have. And then now I'm going to walk 20 miles to go to the restaurant. When I arrived there, they said to me, you cannot enter without the mask. So the guy, he told you to buy a mask. And this is how a human being is, you know. When you try to give them a good advice, they find your advice is silly and stupid, and then they will pay the high price for their stupidity. So don't buy the mask, go to the restaurant. You go to the restaurant, you need to buy a mask. <laughs> uh, 8 a.m. in their time. Well, my friend, I'm going to talk to them after I finish here. And... Uh, they said eight time at eight p.m. Hold on, let me see. Well, if we are going to have a debate at eight p.m. New York time, I mean, sorry, uh, 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 Philippine time, eight p.m. That will be what? I need to check. We will call you 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. for this. Okay, let me call this guy because I don't know. <laughs> it's confusing what he's saying. Let me lower the sound of the bell so it doesn't hurt your ears. Hello? Hello? Ah, I lost you. Let's call him again. I'm asking him to tell me when the debate will be, and that's it. We will do it when, you know. Hello? Hello. Yes, my friend. Yeah, you know, you, you know, like you sent to me, you will call me at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. There is no need for you to yes, call me. Because... Just, just organize, my friend. Listen, uh, because 2 p.m., 3 p.m. That I think will be for uh, maybe 3, 4 a.m. in the morning for me here. I don't know. Uh, uh, I want, okay. I, I want uh, you to, I want you to set the time for the debate. I don't want, to, I do not need to talk to you. Just tell me when uh -huh. 
when those guys uh, are ready to debate, you know, and then okay, I will come, uh, and then you call them, you you call me, and then you call them, we will go live here, so we can yes. have it recorded, and because I'm not really, you know, I don't want to uh, uh, have a, a talk with the group, you know, we can do that in private sometime later, but I am, I cannot wait to debate those Muslims, you know what I mean? So, Okay, okay. Talk to them, talk to them, try to do it maybe tomorrow so people here they can have, you know, we know what time we tell people to come. Maybe we can have a couple of thousand to come and enjoy the debate with those Muslim Filipinos who knows nothing about their religion anyway. So tell them what, what time and let them to bring the best of their sheikh, not just a bunch of people who do not know, you know. Tell them bring the best of your sheikh and don't tell them a Christian prince. Nowhere to mention Christian prince. Just says we have a Christian brother, he will debate you. Right? Uh, so send me okay, a message okay, later. Uh, send me a message later. You can send me a message in Patreon. You know Patreon? You do not need to donate. It's for free anyway. You can send me a message in Patreon. Because Skype, now I close it. I will not open it until I go live again. You can send me a message okay, in Patreon. Uh, can, can, I, can I add someone now? Uh, you have a, a Muslim friend? now? You have a Muslim now? No, no. Uh, it is not a Muslim. Uh, uh, my friend, a Catholic friend that want to talk to you. Okay, let me let me hang up on the live, and I will I will stay with you. Stay with me. So, guys, I want to say thank you for okay, all. Okay. I will talk to those uh, brothers from uh, from the Philippines, and see how we can serve their needs. And uh, uh, I hope we will get some Mohammedan from the Philippines to debate us, as you hear, soon, maybe tomorrow or the after, whatever. And we will inform you, and we go from there. So until we see you soon again, Christ is Lord, my friends. Uh, follow follow the, the true teaching of the Lord. Don't follow the man. The man is always sinner. No matter which, who, who, doesn't matter which man is. No man is good to follow. And none of us is good, a good example to follow. The only one we can trust. The only one we can follow is the Messiah. Other names are not to be followed. For man sin. And all men, they need forgiveness of the Lord. So the one who for, follow a sinner man is a fool. And this is why we will never follow someone like Muhammad. But we will follow the Messiah, our Lord. Thank you. God bless you. And until we see you soon again, Christ is Lord. And with his peace, we leave you in peace. Thank you. Take care.